This week on New Media Tech, we talk microphones. We talk types, styles. We use different microphones, show you how they work, uh, talk a little about the pros and the cons. Man, we just dig in deep to microphones. Coming up right after this. Hello and welcome to episode number 10 of New Media Tech. And this week I have a lot of things to go through. Uh, last week we said we were going to talk about microphone types and you can probably see I got a bunch of things sitting around me and you can't even see it all, uh, all the things that are around me. And uh, we're going to spend quite a bit of time. Actually, let me show you all this mess that I have sitting in here with me. You see there's microphones everywhere. Uh, and we're going to go through the different types of microphones, um, the patterns, things like that, and going to explain how we use them as well. We have, we have all kinds of microphones. I just brought a few in, and I'm going to explain just a, a few of the ones that we have. So uh, we're going to get started right away, uh, and I have my notes over here instead of in front of me this week, so you have to because there's too much of a mess around, so sorry about that. However, uh, we're going to get started. So we want to talk about microphone types, and this is very important. This is like the sound. No matter if you do audio or video, your sound is very important. It's like what you want you to sound like. Um, and there are certain type of micro microphones that work better than others for certain uh, certain types of usage. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, we use mostly dynamic microphones in the studio because uh, condenser microphones are they pick up a lot more noise. Uh, they're very sensitive. So we're going to talk about the different types of microphones. Let's get started. Well, I said condenser. Let's go to condenser. So a condenser microphone is a type of microphone that is very sensitive. And uh, it's it was invented in, like I think it was 1914 originally. And what they, it, it is is it's two pieces of metal. Uh, one is charged, so it does require power. And we'll talk about power here in a little bit. Uh, one is charged and one is the pickup. And the one that's charged is in the front, and when you speak into it, it vibrates, and that takes the distance between the uh, piece, the two pieces of metal. Uh, like it's like a, it's like a capacitor, basically. If you know electronics, it's a capacitor, for lack of a better description. But when that when that panel vibrates, they get closer together, and the other panel picks up the difference, and that generates the output of your speaking. Uh, because it is a capacitor, it does require power. Uh, it's not the only kind of microphone that requires power, but it's the one most commonly used that requires power. Sometimes you'll see on a mixing board, uh, a f it's called phantom power or 48 volts, though sometimes they have it both ways. And if you're going to use a condenser microphone, you need to make sure either the microphone has a battery or you have a, a phantom power supply. Uh, you need one or the other. Now I'm going to show you some microphones here in a little bit that are condensers. Some of them have batteries and some of them do not. Uh, and some of them don't require batteries because they're powered via USB. I'm going to show you some USB microphones in a little bit. So uh, condensed microphones are great if you're in a very uh, quiet environment. But let me just say it'll pick up just little bits of fan noise from your PC. And anything close to it, it'll, it'll pick up. It's very, very sensitive. I'm going to uh, talk into one in a little bit. Probably one of the better ones for noise rejection that I've seen, uh, and it's not a, that expensive, and it's not too bad for, pop for people who's going to do podcasting and you want to step up your, your audio a little bit. So that's a condenser microphone. And again, they're just very sensitive. I do not recommend condensers uh, for the most part for doing audio recording for broadcasts. So the next type is dynamic, and this is the one that I probably recommend most of the time. In fact, all the ones you see us use here are, are dynamic. We do have some condensers um, that we do use occasionally, but not typically for doing broadcast type of shows. So uh, the dynamic is much more durable, and it does not require electricity or power. It's not sensitive to moisture. Um, it doesn't like being obviously dunked in water, but it's like if it's humid, it doesn't change how it functions or sounds like a condenser will because uh, they tend to change based on humidity. Um, the condenser mic basically is a moving piece and a magnet. And as the piece moves around the magnet, it generates electricity uh, and signals, which goes out the microphone uh, down, the t down to the soundboard. 
Um, we're going, I'm going to demonstrate multiple different dynamics so you can kind of hear the difference in sound because we have multiple ones here. Uh, we use different ones. We typically use high LPR 40 as much as we can. Um, the a control station, which is where I do a couple of shows from, and um, also so they can talk back to us, is actually a Shure SM7. We're going to show you that. Very popular in radio stations, as is the Electric Voice RE20, which we have one of those here too. Very popular in radio stations as well. Uh, you don't see many Heil PR40s, but I personally like the sound of the Heil PR40, um, the best of the three. My second choice, well, I don't know, I have a hard time deciding. It really depends on what I'm doing. The SM7 typically sounds good. We have some problems with the SM7 when we'll go through that as well. All right, the next type we want to talk about is a ribbon mic, and it is in a similar category to a condenser. They typically require power. Um, it's just how it's put together is just a little bit a little bit different. Um, the best thing to do for understand a ribbon mic and how it works is probably go to like uh, Wikipedia and look up microphones. There's great examples out there uh, on Wikipedia on different types of microphones. There's a bunch of other ones I'm not going to go through because you just don't see them around very often um, that are t variations of condenser mics. There's laser mics that look that look at sound movement and read laser and w uh, sound waves and things like that, but you typically don't see see many of those. So the, the uh, two types you mainly hear about are uh, condenser and dynamic, and they're the two we're going to focus on. Although you may see ribbon mics uh, being used in music recording, we do have one here. We have a blue uh, ribbon mic, and it uh, actually sounds very, very good. Um, it's not quite as warm as a, well, I would typically like uh, microphones to be for audio recording or vocal recording, but it still sounds very good. And if you have somebody that's up in the in the higher range, it's very crisp and clear. But uh, we typically don't, you know, recommend the use for broadcast. All right, so those are the three types. Uh, just remember, condensers are pick up a lot more noise and require power. Dynamics are probably the best for, for um, most things. Okay, so what we want to do now is talk about the pickup pattern. So a microphone picks up in different patterns depending on how it's made. And they have names to this, and I'm going to show you some of the pictures, and I'll put the links to this in the show notes as well. This is another Wikipedia article where I found the, the good drawings, and I'll just show you the, the drawings and explain them a little bit to you. But when you're picking out a microphone, you got to determine how you're going to use it and what its pattern is. And each of the microphones we use here are, are different types of patterns, and I'm going to show you some of the different types of microphones and how we use those different types of microphones. So, um, what I want to do is I want to switch over to the Wikipedia page. And we're going to first look at omnidirectional. And like the name says, it's it's omni, so it's all around. It's 100 or 360 degrees around the microphone. And what you will find, uh, uh, actually, you don't see many true 100% omnis. Um, there are a few around, but they typically are... Uh, not full omnis. There's always a little bit of a dead space. Although I will say some lavalier mics are omnis and pick up everything around in a 360 degree, with the exception of behind. They have a little bit of a, uh, bottom rejection. And um, we actually have a lav here. I'm going to show you in a little bit that it follows this pattern pretty closely, but still has a little bit of dead spot in it. And the problem with omnis is it picks up everything around you, so it's not very directional. It'll pick up noise from everywhere. So no, again, not a great microphone for a broadcast unless you're trying to like mic a choir or something like that. This is probably not a bad a bad option. And this one I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you because I don't really have any bi-directional. However, the one microphone I have sitting next to me here is a tri-directional. Can be. It's selectable. So I'm going to show you that. But basically, it has two pickup areas. Or well, in my case, it has three. It can be. It can do well. Actually, the one I have here, I think, can do. Let me look. I think it can do both. Okay, the one I have here can do this, actually. There's a switch on the back. It can do a one direction, a two direction, or a three direction. And so basically you have a pickup in the front, in the back, in a, in a bi-directional. And then in a tri-directional, you have a pickup in the front, back, and to one of the sides. So that's why I wanted to show you that, because I want the microphone I'm going to show you, you can do that. And we're going to go look at card cardioid, or cardioid, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> And um, basically, cardioid, is, the whole idea of cardioid is it picks up from one direction the, the most, but and it has rejection from the back, um, and it has some a little bit of a side, 
and you see cardioid mics. Sometimes you see hypercardioid or supercardioid. We're going to talk about those as well. They're just they're still in general a one direction mic. It just how wide they are, and some of them have better uh, back projection or rear project uh, rear protection from audio sounds. So a cardioid um, itself does have good projection from the rear. So here's the front of the microphone up here at zero. At 180, you can see it has decent sound rejection. And you see this uh, quite a bit. This actually may be my, my uh, lab may actually be a cardioid, not an omnidirectional. I can't remember if which one, which one I actually pulled out of the box. Uh, then we have uh, hyper and super cardioid. And basically, uh, let's look at them both here. Hyper cardioid has... Uh, not as good uh, back end uh, protection, but better front end. And in, if you go in, if you go from hyper to super, you see that even gets even more. So you get really good front end coverage, uh, and so you have like side, like a little bit off to the side, stuff like that. And you get well with that, you get a little bit of the back as well. So things right behind it can be picked up. Uh, I typically recommend a hyper or super cardioid for a, for a broadcast mic. And then there's a, a really big variation on this, and actually you see this used uh, for shooting TV shows and movies and stuff like that, and it's the shotgun. I have one here I'm going to show you. Well, we use quite a few of these, actually. Um, and you can see it's it's sensitive a lot farther to the front, very directional, and the problem, only problem with it is it does not have great rear rejection. So, uh, and there's a, there's a little bit on the side, but typically uh, what you want is this distance and you don't get much uh, uh, in the rear anyways, because uh, you're typically ha holding it overhead or, to, or, or down beneath. So the back is either going to the sky or it's going to the ground. So you don't typically have to worry about that too much. Um, and then the sides are the same way, they're over somebody's head. Uh, you typically don't get much side stuff either, unless you're in a very, very noisy room. So those are the pickup patterns. Uh, I would try to recommend staying away from omnidirectional. Uh, I would even stay away from subcardioid. I didn't even show you that one. Um, the more you can get into the hyper or supercardioid, the better you're going to have. Or cardio is even, you know, cardio is good too. Um, and shotguns, I've seen people use them for broadcast, uh, but they're not really made for that. And they're a little, maybe a little overly sensitive in some cases because they, uh, a lot of shotguns have inside, like the one I'm going to show you has this. It's actually a, condenser microphone but the protection the side protection is built in so it's very focused to the front but it uses the um, condenser because it's so sensitive so it allows you to pick up sounds farther away focusing only on the front okay so those are the polar patterns now um, what I want to do is come back over and I'm going to go through some of the different mics that I have here this is a Heil PR40 and uh, we use these in the studio most of the time, uh, I have uh, somebody likes using the RE20 uh, as well in here, and I have it sitting over here. I'm going to show you that in a second. And I'm actually using this one to talk. You can see I'm on that microphone right there. So um, oh, this is considered an NPI. This is a Heil PR40. It's a great microphone. Um, it's probably one of my favorites. And you, for a long time, I didn't even try one. I heard people talk about it, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to be, don't want to be a follower. But I got one to try, it, and I do really like how it sounds. Uh, so that's why we still use the high PR, how PR forties. Um, you'll see on the front here, I have a pop filter. This doesn't come with it. And it's in a shock mount that's, uh, did come with it either, but I definitely recommend shock mounts. Um, and you can hear me touching it as I'm touching the, the pop filter, but this is an end fire, which means it only, it's very good at side rejection. If I come off to the side, you see it gets farther away and it, it has a really great side protection, which is good for us because uh, the RD20s do not do this very well. They don't have great side rejection. And in a room with three people, you it starts sounding weird because you get delays and echoes. And um, when we have I mean, we're foam, so we're not going to get echoes around the room, but you're getting delays and from each person. It just, it's a little harder to get the audio sounding really good because we're all generally talking and facing the same way as each other um, and we can turn these to a little bit to the side and the side rejection is great uh, we use a little bit of a gate to protect uh, uh, the noise and it allows the gate to, gate to close because uh, of the side rejection and stuff like that so uh, again it's a it's a very good very good microphone um, the other one I want to show you here is this is let me see if I can get this out here without making too much noise sorry for the noise we don't generally move microphones around. This is uh, Electro Voice RE20. You see these a lot in radio stations. And now I'm on the RE20. 
Um, I like the sound of it typically. It's, and there's some adjustments on this one that you don't have on the PR40. On the side, there is a roll-offs. So you can uh, roll off. Well, I keep everything straight. What you're hearing right now is, is no EQ in straight. These are all flat right now. Uh, it can roll off the low end a little bit on this one. And then the shore has a couple audio on that one too. But this is an RE20. Um, this is probably my second favorite mic. It doesn't have great off-axis rejection, as you can tell. It does have a sum. Uh, definitely a little bit stronger in the front, a little bit more uh, low end in the front. But uh, the off-axis is not as good as the Heil PR40. But if you're looking for a decent microphone, this is actually a good one. Um, some people don't like how it sounds for their voice. Uh, it may require just a little bit of EQ to get that that fixed. Um, but it's a very it's a pretty quiet mic overall. So let's go look at the Shure mic and make, go make noise. I'm gonna go back to the Heil while I move this. And this actually I took us off of the control station so there's none out there right now we have this on a boom mic normally we don't we don't have this sitting on tables like this this is a shore it's an sm7 also very popular in radio stations now uh this is probably my least favorite of these mics um it's and i tell you there's a couple problems i've had with this and its volume is super low you probably heard when i changed uh the volume level is definitely different i mean look at I'm looking at the meters, even the meters are lower. And uh, I have the gain almost at 100%. That's why you may hear a little bit more noise in the background, like uh, a little s behind it, because I have the gain so high on this mic. And uh, this is, a, we have more than one of these, and they're both exactly the same way, so I don't think it's a problem with the mic. You can kind of see back here, there's two roll-off switches. There's a high roll-off and a low roll-off. Actually, let me look, make sure I'm telling you right. Actually, it's not exactly right. There is a, a high roll-off, but there's also a little bit of a boost uh, in the mid as well. So, But there's different switches in the back. You can change it. Um, these right now are set up for flat, uh, just so you could hear how it sounds coming through. I wanted to make sure you heard differences in the quality of the microphones. Now, this is a very popular mic, and I, I never figured out why I can't get this to work with a decent volume. Um, that's my only complaint about it. It overall, it's a little bit noisier, and I, and I think I'm hearing the noise because I had the gain so high to, to get any volume out of it, and uh, that's probably my biggest complaint. But people that well, I've done shows with where I'm out there, that's why I use all the time, and they say it sounds fine. It just to me, for some reason, it doesn't sound so, so good. Um, I am, you know, I wear in-ears, so it may just be that it's not, it's different enough that I, I can tell the difference. I don't, I don't really know what that could be what it, it is versus how it really sounds. It's very hard to adjust yourself whenever you're, um, you know, talking. You almost need somebody else to do it for you. So that is the Shure SM7. Like I said, very popular. Typically, you see them on, uh, we keep it upside down off of a, a boom mic. Um, the plug is a weird place on these. The plug is on the bottom right here. It's designed really to be on uh, a, mic boom, a mic boom. So All right, let me go back to the Heil. And I don't know how it sounds. I'll, I'll hear it when I and I edit this, but the difference in quality of sound in my ears is incredible going back and forth between those two. Okay, so uh, the other one I got plugged in here that I want to, to do, and you'll see us use this on a lot of our shows where, I mean, it's not always nice to have one of these things in there. Uh, and I actually, I'm not a huge fan of having these in there. Um, I don't, they don't bother me, but I'd, I'd rather almost have it uh, hidden, I guess is the way I'm trying to think. And that's what we use a lab for. Now, well, um, we have a bunch of these, and uh, we have a couple different brands, but our favorite, and one we have the most of, is Rode, uh, Rode, or depending on who you are and how you want to say it. Um, and the reason we like these so much is because we can use them for so many different things. Uh, I should have brought this in, but I didn't see it out there. Um, you see on the end here, let me go ahead and unplug it. You see on the end, this little piece, uh, I don't have a camera where I can bring it any closer. Uh, this unscrews, so you can change this end out. So we have wireless packs that we use on the cameras. We can unscrew this and put on an adapter for our wireless packs. And then when we need to use them in here, we can unscrew this off and put them on the XLR plug. And we you know multiple uses that way. The, um, the microphones sound awesome. Um, the clips are a little weak, but we still use them. We left them on here. This one hasn't broken yet. <laughs> But you clip them in your pocket, um, and it makes it nice and convenient. 
Uh, my only issue I've had with these is I've had one of these ends uh, right here go bad where the screw on is. And that could have just been maybe us over tightening it or something. I don't know. But we had to replace the microphone. We, they, they, they replaced it for us. They didn't charge us for it, but then we had to send it back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on. And you'll see us use this for shows where we use green screen a lot. Because it would be really funny to see this in a green screen. It kind of defeats the purpose. But let me go over to this. And now I'm on the lav. And this lav actually sounds very good. Um, I think this is a cardioid. If I remember a cardioid, depending on who you are. Um, I don't think this is an Omni. Now we do use these a lot, and um, actually I didn't put it up where it should be anyways. Let me move it up. Sorry. Now one of the problems you have this is just closed. You see I'm just barely touching it, and it, you know, clothes rubbing, and sometimes you hit the wire. All these wires are actually very good. A lot of times you hit the wire and you can hear it. This one's very good. Um, good isolation from it. But uh, this is, we use this one as well, and you'll see us uh, using it. Sometimes I'll, I'll Sometimes on some shows, if I'm ha if I'm messing with something and I'm not sure if I messed up the audio, I'll wear this and I record on this, and uh, we record up to eight channels at a time. So I'll have it as a backup, basically, in case what I was messing on with this microphone uh, is not working anymore. All right, let's go back to the Heil. There's the Heil. Okay, so these little microphones. I have one other one I got plugged in. I'm going to let you hear. But while, before, before I get there, this is a shotgun mic. This is a Sennheiser, and we have quite a few of these around as well. Um, the These are typically used for, I mean, I've seen people use them like this, and you know, but you don't want to put them that close because they're, they're very sensitive microphones. Um, we use them for video shoots. Uh, we very, very often use these instead of anything else. Uh, if we're outside, especially shooting, if you're doing like a man on the street type interview, which we tend to do quite a few of, uh, we'll use these. We stick it on a pole or we take two or three of them with us and we record from these. Uh, one of the things about uh, these kind of mics is they're very sensitive to wind. So um, I don't have the blimp here, but I do have one of these things. My dog calls it her toy. Uh, but you can put one of these. This is a road cover and you just slide this in like that and um, you take it outside. Now this, I like the blimps a little bit better because they tend to support the microphone a little bit better because in this case, um, you're going to put this on the end of a, a pole, which typically has two little rubber grommets that holds it in here. But with a blimp, it has a whole support system inside where this whole thing is supported by rubber bands and it has this all the way around it. And uh, they're a little bit bigger, but they uh, I think they work a little bit better in my, in my opinion. I, sometimes you hear noise uh, from the pole if you just use the two rubber grommets or if you use the blimps, they typically don't make the noise. But you don't typically use in the studio. Although in the, in, uh, in our studio, we have one right there. And uh, like I said, we record eight channels and we record the room uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of room noise uh, to fill in the program. But also, if something would happen that this microphone would stop working um, and I didn't know it, or uh, for some reason I wear a lav sometimes when I'm doing using this microphone, is I got something I can go back to. Um, something we've learned by you know shooting videos for people and little short stories is if you have an audio issue, it's nice to have a backup. So we generally do at least once times two different types of audio backups. But that's just us. That's just us being paranoid because we've been bit by that before. Um, it's just it, when you get, it's one of those things where you take a shot and it's the good shot and then you got to go back and redo it because the audio was messed up. Okay, so the other microphones I got here, well, before I get to those, I want to show you uh, while I'm on the, before I go too far, let's do this. This microphone, being a condenser, being a shotgun condenser, has a place for a battery in it. And uh, if you don't have a battery in it, it requires 48 volts. Now we, our uh, audio field mixers do have 48 volts in them, so we don't typically put batteries in them, although we carry batteries with us all the time just for this reason. Uh, well, that, that another reason. So, but this one takes batteries. What I want to show you is a microphone, this is actually out of Russia, it's called Octava. And we use these for inside, if we're doing a shoot inside. And these are very, well, these are very well used, you can be able to tell. We have two of them in this little box here. And uh, they do things a little different. It's kind of interesting how the Russians do things. Uh, a lot of microphones have 20 dB pad switches on them, so you can take the volume down. In the case of them, what they have is, here's the mic body, here's the microphone itself, the capsule. And if you want to put a 20 dB pad in it, Oh, I'm sorry, this is a 10 dB pad. You screw this piece onto it, just like this. And that's your pad. There's no switch. You screw it on. 
Um, but this is a condenser microphone as well. And we have a little ball we put this in. We don't typically use a 10 mm D pad. It's normally, I don't, don't normally use that. Uh, but we put a little a little ball in on the end of a boom, and it picks up. And again, it's condenser. There is no battery in this one. So this one requires 48 volts. Hence the reason our field mixers have 48 volts in them, uh, because we uh, need 48 volts without a battery. So this is Oct it's called Octava. They make some decent stuff, too. It's, uh, it's good, and they sound awesome. Um, this is, like I said, it's just weird, this little thing you've screwed on here to be a 10 dB pad right there. And one other microphone that we use when we set up a studio is we go install a studio, we go through and do all the audio checks and make sure the room sounds good. And uh, we typically do not use a Behringer um, box to do this. And adjust the room but this microphone is a sound adjustment microphone so very sensitive we have it adjusted like once every couple years this one's probably due for a one but this is a behringer microphone and it's an ecm 8000 it's designed for basically you stick it in the middle of the room you plug it into the behringer device um or any device you're going to use to do room monitoring and you just it makes all these noises it's like uh, white noise and stuff like that and it adjusts for the room for delays and echoes and stuff like that um we also have used it with um, some other live software to go in and, and set up um theaters and stuff as well and we don't typically use a barrister for that though uh but uh we can go in and adjust the room. We go into the uh, speaker processors and make the adjustments as we see needed until we get everything balanced out, check different parts of the room. It's a very sensitive microphone. You see it's in this case, and it's in this, it's very uh, padded because it's uh, adjusted. You basically stick it on a machine and you make, make all the adjustments. So that's that. So now um, for a podcaster or a netcaster, whatever name you want to use, just getting started, there's a couple of options. I mentioned this last week. You can go out and get some inexpensive headphones, just like this headset. Um, these will do okay. Uh, it would not work good for video, probably. It would look a little funny, maybe. But I've seen people do it for video, and it wasn't that distracting. But these are very inexpensive. They're like you know, $30 a piece. Each one of these is about $30, probably. And they sound good. Now, these are both Logitechs, I think. Yeah. Both Logitechs, and they make decent stuff. But if you want to go to, to the next step up, another option you have is go to a USB mic. Now, there's a couple options for USB mics. There are a USB adapters that you plug in the back of something like this PR, HAL PR40 or any of these other mics, and you plug in a USB then, and you have a microphone. Um, it doesn't give you much control over mix or anything like that, uh, but no USB will really do a good job. But it's a good, inexpensive way to get started. But now I want to go and show you well, I'm going to show you this one first. This is the one I was talking about before. This is a blue mic, and I have liked blue stuff. Um, not a big fan of this particular one. Um, I just I like the other blue I'm going to show you in a second here a little bit better. But for a new uh, broadcaster, this is not a bad option. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. It's first of all, it's very noisy. You got to be in a very quiet room. Uh, it definitely is condenser. Uh, you will hear fans running and anything like that around you, computer fans running, you'll pick it all up. Uh, it is USB. It uses micro USB, and it's on the bottom. Uh, one of the things I like about it, it has a built-in headphone amp. You'll see a plug right there, and that is where you can plug in your headphones, and you can play back. On your computer, you will have uh, an output to the headphones from the blue mic, and so you can actually plug your headphones directly into here and uh, hear everything back. And there's a volume right there on the front, and there's also a mute switch right there. Very nice feature. I wish a lot more things had mute switches like that. And then on the back, you're going to see you have your gain. Here's your gain right here, knob. And then this is a unique feature about this mic, and why I think it's not a bad or it's not a horrible option <laughs> for a broadcaster. If you look at this switch, there's different pickup patterns. So whole way over to the right or the left is a double pickup pattern. So it picks up from this side and this side. If I go to the next one, it's a Omni. It's an Omni setup like that. If I go to the next one, it's cardioid or cardioid. And if I go to the last one, it is a three pickup. So there's basically three pickups in here. There's one on this side in the front. There's one on each side. So when I go to that setting right there, all three of these are picking up audio. So you can sit here like this with 
two people next to you and you can all talk into the same microphone uh, with one input. There is no adjustment of individual pickups though. It's all one level. The other thing, and I'll tell you how we use this, is if we go to a meeting that we're going to broadcast, uh, we will put this like if it's a town hall type meeting where there's multiple people at a table, we'll use this because um, it's a great, it's like I said, it picks up everything. And um, it picks up both directions that way from the town hall and the people this way. Uh, it works great for that kind of thing. I've actually used it with uh, go to meeting before where I was in going to broadcast to a room with a laptop and rather than use the laptop uh, microphone, I put this in the middle of the room and it works. It worked great. So um, I don't necessarily like the sound of it uh, when I'm recording audio for a show. Uh, if you can keep the volume low enough, it's not so bad. Uh, you just got to kind of mess with it. What I have found though, they make blue mix this and it's called a blue snowball and it's USB and you see I got it plugged in. So I'm actually going to let you listen to what it sounds like. Um, and again, it's, it's a condenser mic. So there is still pickup of noise, not as bad as this blue microphone, but the snowball seems like it has a little bit better rejection of noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm um, going to All right, so this is the blue microphone. Now, in my ears, it sounds funny because I have delay. One of the things about USB is there's a bit of delay. So I'm hoping to you that it sounds normal and just doesn't sound like it does to me. It sounds like I'm in a drum um, because my jaw is telling my ears what I'm saying, and it's coming back to me a little bit later. Um, but this is the blue microphone. So I don't know if you can hear any noise. I don't really have much noise in the studio except we're in a padded room. Um, but it doesn't sound bad. I actually, I have recorded training videos with this for my outsourcers and they say it sounds awesome so it's totally up to you this is probably like 140 some dollar 149 dollars maybe 150 dollars um one last one that i that's something i looked at for this one i think this one's about the same price um but i'm not exactly sure now the one thing is you hear me blowing on it there is no pop filter in it so you need to put a pop filter in front of it or, or don't breathe whichever one you want to do so um, you can get pop filters. I should have uh, I got one. So let me go grab it real quick. Um, you can get pop filters at uh, any music store probably, and like Gooseneck, and they just uh, you can attach them to the table or attach them to the, the mic stand or whatever, and they just Gooseneck right in front of it, and that's probably the best thing to do with this microphone because it is very sensitive to air, uh, as is this one. It also, it, there is there is not a good uh, pop filter built into the them, themselves. Okay, let's go back to the how. All right, we're back to the Heil. So that was the Blue Snowball. And that is, again, a USB mic. Uh, not very expensive. Uh, the problem with USB mics is you have little control over them as far as a soundboard. And uh, I will tell you with this, I have had both these Blue mics plugged in together, and they do work together depending on what you're using to record. If you're, um, if you're doing something like in um, GarageBand uh, to record, you can definitely record on both. Um, I can't say I have tried anything other than no. And actually, no. I've used a couple of things with with this with, with them together, uh, where I've tried to record multiple tracks. I've recorded uh, even in um, in uh, uh, Logic. I've recorded two people singing with it, which, you know, separately. So you can use them both to, you know, together that way as well. Just a little bit less, uh, a little less control. Okay. So have I gone through all the microphones? I think I have. All the ones I brought in. Okay, so I mentioned before about pop filters, uh, very important. Um, I, for some reason, the RE20 uh, doesn't, I've never had a problem with pop filters on an RE20, so I don't know what, maybe there's a good pop filter internal. Uh, the SM7 comes with two different sizes. Um, the Hiles don't come with one, but I definitely recommend them. Although I can't say I've really had much in the way of pop uh, there as well. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to go to, I kind of talked a little about the audio thing. Like I said before, USB, mic or headset, uh, that would be like your f first thing. I would, if you don't, if you really try to start out with nothing, I would try to start out with something like this, uh, a little less expensive, and it'll work fine if you're just doing, um, doing audio um, until you get, a, you know, want to put a little bit more money into it. Like I said, don't put too much money into it starting out because some people get started out, and by episode 10, they're tired of it and they don't want to do it anymore. So I don't want people to go out and spend a lot of money on it. Um, now, if you're coming in, like our typical customer is a company that wants to start producing video. Uh, we know what they're, 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 that's their their goal, you know, is to start producing video. So that's a little different. But if you're just starting out like a, a little podcast at home where you do a fan podcast of some kind or something like that, you know, 
don't spend don't put a lot of money into it uh starting out to you sure that's what you want to do when you're sure you want to, that's what you want to do then we'll you start going forward and put a little bit, more, a little bit more money into it and if you can skip from the headset to like a how pr40 on the soundboard that is even even better and next week uh, i'm going to talk about how you can use um a soundboard to get your audio into your your computers couple ways you can do it there's fairly inexpensive ways you can do it as well. Um, again, with inexpensive, sometimes comes issues. Um, I'm going to recommend some additional hardware, but there's definitely some costs behind it. Uh, like if you look at M Audio or something like that, there's different different uh, boxes you can do. But I'm going to show you things that cost like $19 as well. Uh, again, the the lower quality stuff produces lower quality output but if you're just trying to go one step in a better quality microphone i will tell you if you go to like a higher pr40 in a, in a small soundboard and those little emma and those little boxes they'll sound better than this so it's a step it's a step in the right direction and then when you get the money you up to create your input to the next one so that's something we'll talk about a little bit more next week i do want to talk about some other hardware i'm going to put this into the studio and before i do that i wanted to talk about it a little bit because i'm almost done uh I mentioned before we're going to put in media uh media shell. Well <laughs> that's a blast from the past. Um we're gonna put in switching software to do lower lower thirds after the ATEM and before the recorder. So um all I'm going to do is put this box, it's a black magic design. This is an intensity shuttle. This is the USB three version of the intensity shuttle. Uh, and it'll take the video in and out and allow us to put into Wirecast and put on our lower thirds. Uh, so we're going to, that's going to go in. It's not in yet. That's why I wanted to show you before I plugged it in so I could show it to you. Now, the other thing I found is I found a great way to bring uh, video into Skype. Well, one of our issues has been with Skype is how do you get video into Skype? Um, I recently had a Skype machine die. It was a Windows machine. I replaced it with a Mac Mini. And... Uh, I just got this, and it's, it's going to go on there, but this is a Blackmagic Design mini recorder, Ultra Studio mini recorder, and it allows me, and it works awesome, believe it or not, uh, to bring video into Skype. Uh, I mean, it's so simple. So I've gone from this tower PC to this Mac mini in this little box, and it's my Skype machine now. Uh, and I'm gonna, when I get done with this show, I'm going to go put that in place. So, yeah, pretty pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm very impressed by it. Um, there's something fairly new from Blackmagic Design that's come out. So that's going in, in our work or into our studio setup here soon. Um, I do have some other stuff I'm going to show you in the future from Blackmagic. I'm a big Blackmagic fan. Um, every one of our cameras, all four of them in this room and the one in the other room, all have um, HDMI to SDI converters on them and all of our monitors, which uh, you kind of see one right here. And uh, they're all um, going from HDMI to SDI, so I have tons of these little uh, converters. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit, bring some in, show you how they work. All right, that's pretty much it for this week. Well, now I want to do one more thing. I want to talk about Viber. Last week I mentioned about a product called Viber, and I did play with it this week, and it's pretty neat. Uh, it touts itself as being a possible replacement for Skype. Uh, for audio quality, it's actually pretty decent. I've been pretty impressed, but the video had a lot of breakup in it. So I can't say that it is a decent replacement yet for Skype. Although it's very, it's prototype mode, you know, it's still beta, whatever. So it's still a long way to go and that could improve. The one weird thing is it requires you to have a cell phone and install Vibro on your cell phone. After you do that, you can install it on PCs too and, and talk PC to PC, no problem. But the fact that it requires you to put it on your mobile is a little bit weird for me. Um, so it's not quite there yet. We're going to revisit that in a little bit. However, one other thing that I did revisit uh, I was on a show this week and they were having Skype issues. So we actually used Gmail or Gtalk and I was pretty impressed. Uh, Gtalk worked wonderfully. The video was clear. The audio was good. Uh, we had a little bit of an audio video sync issue in the middle, but then cleared itself up. So, um, I'm going to go back and actually look at that as a backup. I still want to think at this point, use Skype, uh, as the primary, uh, for us, but, uh, I will Definitely want to look at like, like G, uh, Gtalk a little bit more, or Google, Google Talk, whatever it's called. All right, so that is uh, it for this weekend. Uh, I do want to remind you that you can get us on YouTube. Uh, and if you're getting us on YouTube, uh, do hit the subscribe button, click the thumbs up button, tell your friends about us, do a little bit of a share. We'd just love if you help us grow this show. It's our, our newest show, well, newest show for now. 
and uh, we're trying to get the community built around it. And uh, as I mentioned last week, there's other great shows out there about this kind of stuff. Uh, go check out thetechbuzz.net uh, and lo- watch Broadcast Now and also TTFN TV and Studio Tech Live. Uh, both of those are on Tuesdays, uh, day after today. <laughs> and uh, uh, they're great shows to watch too. Go learn as much as you can. If this is something that interests you, it's best to go out and learn as much as you can. They're all great people. It's a great community. Uh, and we love helping out people. Uh, if you're watching this on iTunes, I do ask that you hit the subscribe button so you get it all downloaded all automatically. Uh, and if you're out there on iTunes, can you go ahead and leave us a, a rating? Because that helps us. Give us like a five-star rating. I love five-star ratings. <laughs> and uh, a comment out there, that great. that's great. That definitely helps us out. If you have a Roku and you haven't found us on Roku, go download a Roku app. Uh, it's been out now, and we have uh, almost 7,000 downloads of the show or of the the app out there right now. So it's growing very quickly. Um, and, again, spread the word around. Uh, we do record the show typically Monday nights. Uh, we're trying to get a scheduled time for the show so we can maybe try to build the community a little bit better, get people in the chat room, and interact with us as well. Uh, just trying to figure out the best day and time for that. We'd love to get your uh, ideas uh, for future shows, questions, comments, whatever. That's awesome. Uh, we love love all that stuff. Um, you can go out to tech-zen.tv and uh, click the show page and get our show notes, uh, contact information, all our social connections are out there, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can find us at pretty much any podcast directory, wherever you get your podcast uh, normally, including Stitcher. We're on Stitcher now, too. So you can listen, listen to us on Stitcher. All right, that is it for this week. We will see you next week. Thank you.